Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video. And this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide. This is a video series that I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. You've downloaded the program, you've got it installed, and you have verified that it does work on your computer, but you don't really know how to do anything with it. You get inside the program, you take a look around, it's pretty cool, but you don't know how to get to the International Space Station, you don't know how to go to the moon, or really just in general, you don't know how to do anything useful with the program. This video series is definitely uh, targeting someone such as yourself. I am assuming though that you're going to watch these videos in order, so if you happen to be finding my channel for the first time here in this video, I'd recommend that you uh, press the pause button, go back to video number one, and work your way forward from there. Now having said that, here in this video, we're going to take another look at an MFD that we can use to help make our life in Orbiter a bit more fun, a bit easier. Now, in a previous couple of videos, we looked at a burn time calculator, and we just and we saw how useful that could be in quite a few situations. And we took a look at base sync MFD, and we saw you know how we can use that to help get lined up with the base. And another MFD that we want to look at here pretty quickly is uh, Arrow Break MFD. It won't be too long before you take off, get into orbit, and want to uh, land back at a base. You know, land back at Cape Canaveral or perhaps Wide Awake or one of the other bases. It turns out that Orbit MFD, uh, when you have it set to ground track, and it shows you, you know, your predictions for where you're going to end up at on Earth, uh, those predictions aren't accurate in the slightest because Earth has an atmosphere, and Orbit MFD doesn't take the atmosphere into account. So if you rely on that MFD to uh, help you do your deorbit and everything, you're going to find that you're going to end up several thousand kilometers off from where you would like to be. So this is where Aerobrake MFD comes in. Aerobrake MFD is simply an MFD that uh, has basically, I guess you would say, atmospheric modeling built into it so that when we do our deorbit burn, it can not only predict where we would end up at on Earth, but it also takes the atmosphere into account. Now, as the name would suggest, uh, Aerobrake MFD is only useful for bodies that have an atmosphere. So bodies like Earth, bodies like Mars, and some of the various moons uh, around the solar system. Now, you would not use it, for example, if you were trying to land on Mercury. Mercury has no atmosphere to speak of. I mean, there might be a few dust plumes of some sort near the surface, but there's really no atmosphere to speak of. Same goes for the moon. Same goes for several of the moons uh, throughout the solar system. So just understand that that's when you use it and that's why you use it. Uh, you don't use it as a navigation tool. For example, if you're trying to go from Earth to Mars, you don't use Aerobrake at all. If you're trying to go from, um, you know, Earth to the moon, it's again, it's not used as a navigation tool. It's just used to help you land on a body that has an atmosphere. Now, uh, before we get into how to use the MFD, let's talk about where to get it and how to install it. If you go to orbithanger.com and do a search for Aerobrake MFD, that's all one word and there's no spaces then you should find it pretty quickly, but I will also put this link in the description down below so that you can just click on the link and come straight to this page. Uh, remember when you get here, click download and don't click over here, you know, the file. If you just click on the file, it's just going to open up a new tab and just show you what the content of the file is, but you don't actually download it. So click download and save it somewhere that you know where it's going to be in your downloads on your desktop or whatever. Once you have it downloaded, uh, bring up the zip file and take a look at its contents. Now this MFD is installed similar to most other add-ons that you have in Orbiter and that's simply uh, drag and drop. You could, if you wanted, just highlight all the contents and drag it over to your Orbiter 2010 directory and let go and that would in fact install uh, Aerobrake MFD but it's really, that's not really the recommended way to do it in this particular case. This MFD comes with another zip file inside of it called Aerobrake. It's actually the same exact name, Aerobrake 0.95.2.zip. 
It's a little confusing, and I don't really think it should be packaged this way, but nevertheless, this is how the author decided to package it. This is not just a duplicate of this um, MFD. What this is, if you happen to be using the older version of Orbiter, which I don't think probably anybody is at this point, but if you happen to be using Orbiter 2006, then you would want to open the zip file, then open this zip file, and this would be the uh, contents for Aerobrake MFD for Orbiter 2006. So for Orbiter 2010, you know, 2010, uh, you can ignore this completely, you don't need it. And again, as I mentioned in one of the previous videos, the SDK, Orbiter SDK, uh, SDK stands for Software Development Kit, and if you have an interest in programming, then you would know what uh, CPP files are, you know, uh, these are uh, C++ files, .h files, or headers, and all this type of thing. If you have an interest in programming, then you would want to also include Orbiter SDK uh, in your in your uh, when you copy the information over. But for most of us, myself included, uh, we're not programmers, so we don't even need this part. So all we need at the absolute minimum is just the modules folder, and that's it. And the only thing the modules has in it is a plugin folder, and the only thing the plugin folder has in it is the Aerobrake mfd.dll and then a few of these uh, uh, descriptor files or whatever I don't actually know what the LD files are but at the bare minimum all we need is modules that's it so if you take the modules and click it and drag it over to Orbiter 2010 and let go then you'll have it installed generally speaking it's a good idea to install the documentation as well uh, in this case the doc folder just has Aerobrake PDF in it so if you just drag the doc also over to Orbit Orbiter 2010 and let go, then you'll have uh, the documentation as well. So that's how you install uh, Aerobrake MFD. Go ahead and close that out. Let's bring up the launch pad. Now, anytime you install a new MFD, it's not enabled by default. So just as we did before, you would go to the modules folder, and in the modules folder, you'll find Aerobrake MFD listed under miscellaneous. Now, in yours, it will not be checked. Uh, because it uh, hasn't been enabled yet, so you actually have to click the uh, checkbox next to Aerobrake MFD in order to enable it. And once you've done that, you have successfully downloaded, installed, and enabled Aerobrake MFD. So now that we've covered that, let's talk a little bit about how to use this MFD. Now we're only going to be able to go over the very basics of Aerobrake MFD in this sort of brief introductory video, but uh, it will be, I think, sufficient for for everybody for just getting started. There's With a lot of these MFDs, there's a lot more they can do. Uh, there's more details, there's more information that you can gather from them. But there's also what you would use it for like in 90% of the cases, and that's kind of what we'll cover in this video, is just the main use of this MFD. So let me open a scenario that I've created that... Uh, Actually, I didn't create it. I copied it. A scenario that I copied that would have that would allow us to show off this MFD a little bit, and that's going to be uh, we're going to be docked at the ISS in the XR2. Now, up to this point in these uh, beginner guides, I haven't talked about how to add on additional vessels or how to add on the XR2. Uh, we'll cover that at some point in the future. Welcome aboard, but we can Commander. still. All systems nominal. We can still learn how to use Aerobrake MFD even though we're using a different uh, craft. So let's first of all switch over to Orbit Earth and let me bring up this these larger MFDs because we can see things better. Now again since Aerobrake MFD is used to help us land on Earth then we kinda need to set up a landing procedure before we can even start to use Aerobrake MFD so let's go ahead and do that. Now we've already talked about how to use Base Sync MFD, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up Base Sync MFD. I'm going to target Cape Canaveral, and don't worry, this is this is about Aerobrake. This isn't about Base Sync, but we're using Base Sync uh, to help us set up the landing process so that we can then learn how to use Aerobrake. So I have a uh, Cape Canaveral targeted, and we're going to switch ED over to Direct, and I can see here in Base Sync that on my next passage uh, to Cape Canaveral, I'm going to be off by 1,700 kilometers. So in short, that's too much, so I'm just going to warp time forward at a factor, just go to about 1,000. 
and I'm going to go around the planet as many times as is necessary so that I have a natural passage that's uh, reasonably close to Cape Canaveral. And I can see here now that in seven orbits I'll be passing 602 kilometers from Cape Canaveral, but I think we can probably even get a little bit closer than that. So let's go around a few more orbits. Let's go ahead and go out to 10,000. Uh, yeah, so at, uh, on this passage we're 557 kilometers out. We'll probably go ahead and take that one. Unless I see something else pop up here at the end. And no, it's not going to get any better. So we'll go ahead and take this orbit here. So as we're getting around, you know, not far away from the time to uh, do the deorbit, go ahead and undock from the ISS. And let me just check procedurally here. Uh, external cooling is off. I generally forget to check that, but if you can remember, check to make sure that it's off. Uh, check to make sure that your radiator is deployed. Now we're going to go ahead and undock. Rotation, translation. And with a little bit of translation, we're just going to push ourselves down and away from uh, the ISS here. And of course the nose cone is going to be open because we were docked, so let's go ahead and turn on the APU. Keyboard shortcut for that is, uh, I believe it's Alt-A. No, it's Control A. Now the APU is on, and then Control K is a keyboard shortcut to close the nose cone. Obviously, you can also come up to the panel here and flip the switch if you prefer, or if you don't know the keyboard shortcut. And again, we'll get to arrow brake here as quickly as we can, but first we have to set up our landing because, again, arrow brake, you know, that's what it's for, it's to help us land. Uh, that's closed, so we can control A to turn off the APU. Let's switch back over to these larger MFDs so we can watch what's going on. And what we want to do, let's uh, switch display here over to orbit plane. And let's turn off the orbit. See here it says target ISS, and we don't need that anymore, so let's target nothing. And let's target Cape Canaveral here. Now we're going to come around here to work almost over top of Cape Canaveral and that's going to mean that we're going to be one orbit away from time to land. I'll show you what I mean here as we get closer. Okay, you can see basically we're right there by Cape Canaveral. So now as we go past you're going to see this line here it's going to move up one and we're now one orbit away. So now when we get halfway around when we get half, let me actually, I'm getting closer to the ISS. That's what that 500, 600 call out is. Rotation, translation. So let me put in a little more translation just to make sure that I'm drifting away from the ISS and not getting, running the risk of crashing into it or anything. Okay, getting back on track. Now, what I want to do is I want to go halfway around the planet. And I, can know, I know where that is. There's a couple of indicators. Again, when this number uh, stops counting up and starts counting down, that's one. Also, this line indicates where Cape Canaveral's at. So when I'm halfway around, in other words, when this green line is over here, then I'm halfway around. So those are a couple of indications that I can use. Speed up things a little bit. And as we get close to that point, we can come back to real time, go to the retrograde position, because remember our... In order to deorbit, we need to lower one side of our orbit. Now we're going to watch this number, and when it stops counting up, then we know where you are exactly halfway around. A little bit faster. And we should be, yep, we're halfway around. Now it's counting down, so we'll go retrograde. And we'll bring up orbit MFD on this side. We want projection ship, distance, uh, PEA, APA, and the frame of reference doesn't matter. Let's engage the full power of the main engines until our PEA gets uh, lower. Put them back off the main engines. And let's bring the PEA down to about 4, 40. And about right there is good. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now that we've done that, we can start here very shortly taking a look at how to use Aerobrake MFD. 3,000. Let's make sure that we're not going to crash into the space station, although at this point, if we were, there's not a lot I could do about it. 
Now, when we land, we are... Uh, as we set up our landing, we need to wait until we are at what's called entry interface before we can really start to do much of anything. At present, we're still at 369 kilometers above the surface. So we're still in the, basically the vacuum of space, and there's no atmosphere to uh, speak of that, that could really impact our vessel. So we are good to just go ahead and continue to warp time forward until we get all the way over to entry interface. And we can just watch our altitude here in orbit MFD, making sure that the uh, distance is set to PEA APA. As we get close to 120, we'll go ahead and come back to real time. There we are, we're at 115 now. And we can make sure that we have everything closed up that needs to be closed since we're gonna do, and by the way, we're not gonna do a full landing in this video because I'm just wanting to show how Aerobrake MFD works. But as we prepare for our landing, we wanna make sure that we have the nose cone closed, we want to make sure the hover doors are closed, we want to make sure the retro doors are closed, we want to make sure the radiators closed. Uh, I'll give you a quick tip here, even though we haven't gone into the uh, XR2 at all yet, but if you press, I believe it's uh, 9, entry check failed. Uh, and that's 9 on your on the top part of your keyboard, not the numeric keyboard, keypad, but 9 on the top the part of the keyboard. Check. All systems green. Then the XR2 actually will make sure that you have everything closed. You can see here nose cones closed, radiator stowed, retro doors are closed, and so on. So that's just a quick re-entry checklist to make sure that we don't have anything open. Okay, now that we have everything closed up, let's go to the prograde position. And that's just so that we're facing forward. We're not actually going to be pr facing prograde for the sake of the landing. Come back over to this MFD. And then we're going to get into arrow break here. Mach 27 plus. Okay, now we are facing prograde. Rotation. Let's kill rotate. And let's switch over to surface. And let's uh, rotate our vessel so that we are wings level with the horizon. Okay, now we are all set to start looking at arrow break MFD. So let's bring that up. Let's target Cape Canaveral. And let's uh, understand a little bit about this information that we're looking at. And while we're doing that, let me go to uh, warp factor 0 0.1 just to make sure that uh, my altitude doesn't get too low before I can explain this. Now, the default look of Aerobrake MFD, there's a lot going on. Um, what you can do to help maybe eliminate some of the confusion is press mod a couple of times. And you'll notice that that turns off all that data in the background. Primarily, one of the, the main thing that we need to know is where we're going to end up at on Earth when we run out of energy, or you know where Aerobrake predicts that we're going to end up at our, on Earth. This is our current position. This green line pointing out here is pointing to where we are at right now. And the base is this yellow line. It's this yellow line or orange line is pointing to where Cape Canaveral is at. And this green line is showing our projected orbit. This is what Aerobrake thinks is going to happen. And right now Aerobrake thinks we are going to continue uh, coasting around. We're going to pass uh, Cape Canaveral actually by a lot. And we're actually going to climb a little bit farther out into space. We're going to skip out into space. And then we're going to come around. We're going to top out around you know 300 kilometers or something then we're going to come back around and lose some energy skip back out again and eventually we're going to run out of energy and hit the ground somewhere over here well you can see if the base is here and we're going to go all the way around the planet practically a whole time that's that's not what we want we want to land here we don't want to go all the way around so watch what happens when I begin pitching the vessel. Translation. Rotation. Let me go to rotation, and I start pitching the vessel up. Watch what happens with this pr uh, prediction. Hey, as I get here to about 40, uh, 40 degrees pitch, now you can see that according to Aerobrake MFD, I'm going to descend down through the atmosphere, and I'm going to run out of energy, and I'm going to come up a little bit short of uh, KSC. But if I pitch down a little bit, like that, now I'm actually overshooting KSC a little bit. So this is exactly what Aerobreak MFD is for. It helps me predict where I'm going to end up at on Earth. And you'll notice how sensitive it is. 
Notice that as I'm sitting here and the vessel's sort of now pitching back down, as it pitches down, my projection's going farther and farther out. Re-entry check. Or re the only way, check. All the only way you can control this uh, you, is to use a uh, some sort of attitude hold. And in the in the Delta Glider, there's really no good way to set up an attitude hold, but we can do that here in the XR2. Let me go ahead and do that just to show my point. Center of gravity shift online. So I've got the attitude hold autopilot here, which I got to by pressing the number two. And again, that's on the top part of the keyboard. That's not the numeric keypad, but on the number two on top. And I can set, I can tell this system to hold my angle of attack at a certain degree. And you can see here, again, let's switch back over to this MFD for a moment, APU or this view, 80%. that according to Aerobrake MFD, I'm coming up a little bit long. So now if I actually press 2 on the numeric keypad, this will actually adjust my AOA. So if I put in a little bit more pitch, you can see now that it's predicting that I'm going to come up a little bit short. So if I really want to fine tune this, I need to use this autopilot here to adjust it by, you know, just 0 0.5. So if I adjust my pitch down a little bit more, I can get it really close to just spot on where I'm going to run out of energy, where I'm basically right there at the base. So that's what this MFD is for. And you can see here that things are lined up really well right now. So as I cruise in to the Earth at this particular pitch, at this angle of attack, I will arrive, I will run out of energy, and I will land, I will arrive about at KSC. Now, it will not hold absolutely perfect. So as I'm Mark continuing 26. to cruise forward, as I'm coming down closer and getting closer to KSC, I may occasionally have to make a 0 0.5 adjustment one way or the other to my pitch because again watch what happens when I change my pitch by just two degrees or it's going to actually be 2.5 an additional 2.5 degrees of pitch notice how much it changes where I actually end up I'm gonna have to come back over to this MFD so you can see it actually let me do this let me open that up in an external MFD so I don't have to keep switching back and forth so we'll get a nice big MFD over here, and we'll target Cape Canaveral, and we'll mod to shut off that information. So as I just as I adjust my angle of attack by just a couple of degrees, you can see it has a huge impact on where I'm going to end up at on Earth. And that's why it's very necessary to have an MFD like this, because you can imagine if you're trying to if you're trying to pinpoint a base. How are you ever going to be able to figure this out, your, your pitch? How are you ever going to be able to figure out what pitch you need uh, just based on, you know, visual? And especially when you're flying a vessel like the standard Delta Glider, and note that I'm referring to the standard Delta Glider that comes with Orbiter 2010. I'm not talking about Dan Steff's Delta Glider 4. That's a different vessel altogether. But when you're trying to pilot the standard Delta Glider and you don't have an angle of uh, attack uh, control, then it's very difficult to uh, predict where you're going to end up. Now, there's still more to talk about uh, with regards to this MFD. This is just one way to view the information. Another way, and actually the way that I prefer, is to do two clicks. And it's important that you do these clicks in the right order. PG, then PRJ. Now, once you get comfortable with uh, this other view, you might think, well, I don't want to see something that's confusing. But by looking at the information this way, we actually have two pieces of data. Let me go back down to uh, 0 0.1. What we're looking at here is actually the same information that we're, as what we're seeing on the other screen. This green line, this uh, first of all, this X, this white X, or plus sign rather, this is where we are at. We're currently, you know, our geographically, this is where we are at. And this green line indicates where we're, uh, when we're going to run out of energy. Mark and 24. the one advantage, the big advantage that you have with this view is that you can see that not only are we going to, what, not only are we going to run out of energy when we're about over to KSC, but you can see here that with, by looking at this view, we're also 
off from Cape Canaveral were not uh, were a bit far to the south. You can see here, whereas when you just see it from this view, you can see okay, well yes, we are running out of energy when we're when we have the proper distance. But with this view, we can't tell exactly where we're going to be at um, in the United States. We don't know if we're going to be in Alabama or somewhere out in the Gulf of Mexico. We can't tell from this view. So if we press PG, then PRJ, we get over to this view and we can see, okay, we've got the proper amount of energy, but we're coming up a bit to the uh, you know southeast of Cape Canaveral. So with that additional information, we can also include banking left and right. So in this case, we actually would need to bank to the uh, left, which would be sort of north, and that will pull our vessel you know, closer to uh, KSC. So let's go back to real time, and let's put in a bit of bank. And we can do that on the numeric keypad, keypad by pressing 4, or we could also do it here, the set bank. But uh, we'll use... We'll use the numeric uh, keypad number four. And at this point, we're not real low in the atmosphere yet. We're still at 65 kilometers. So we're not going to have a lot of change in our uh, horizontal position just yet. It won't be until we get down, you know, to uh, 60 uh, kilometers, actually a little bit below that, even like 58 kilometers. Then we'll start to see that this green line will start pulling closer to... Uh, closer to K, uh, K, KSC. And by the way, KSC is this yellow box or this orange box. So that's how you use Aerobrake MFD. That's the whole point of this MFD. Now, if you press Mod, you get some additional information. And there's a lot here to go into, so I'm, I, I, I'm not going to cover it all mainly because I just don't think it's necessary to talk about all this information uh, because really all you need in order to help pinpoint your landing is you just need to see this screen. You need to see where you're going to run out of energy, and you need to see you know if you're coming close to the base or if you're farther away. But if you do press mod, you can see exactly what your current angle Lock of attack 23. is. You can see what your lift drag ratio is. And again, a lot of this information just isn't going to mean anything to you. Um, you can see this is the landing time prediction, so it's still uh, 11 minutes until we're going to land. And it shows approximately what our velocity will be when we get to this point. And it's saying currently that our velocity is going to be about 144 meters per second. And then it also gives us the, uh, uh, the lot latitude and longitude of where it thinks we're going to be when we run out of energy. And currently it thinks we're going to be at you know, 84.88 degrees west and uh, 26.7 degrees north. So again, I just don't think that this information is going to be terribly useful to the absolute beginner. So it may help to just press mod a couple of times to turn that off so that it's not in your way. And then as you're coming in for your landings, you can just watch this indicator here to make sure that it's touching uh, around the base. And again, you can't just set it and forget it and warp time forward. Uh, when you're in the atmosphere, if you warp time forward, it's gonna, your vessel's gonna oscillate like crazy and your predictions are gonna be completely wrong and you're gonna end up landing somewhere you know, in the middle of Texas or out here in the middle of the ocean instead of landing Mark at the base. 22. So you just have to be patient. You just have to come down through the atmosphere and let things happen. Now you can get away with a little bit of time warp depending on your computer. Uh, if you, the faster your computer is, the more time warp you can get away with. But I would still not do uh, 10x. What I would do is press Control F2 to bring up the time acceleration uh, box here. So this gives you finer control over time acceleration and we can go out to two Or we can go out to three, you know, we can get away with two or three times acceleration And then you'll notice here the last thing I'll kind of point Not out here 21. as we're coming in for landing You'll notice that as we get closer to the time to land our uh, our, our vessel will start pulling, you know, farther north since we have in Not this 20. since we have in a little bit of left bank In fact, let me put in a lot more left banks. We need to pull quite a bit farther to the north. 19. And we also want to drop our pitch a little bit. And you can see here in this box, this box is our absolute target. This is basically a zoomed in view of this. 
And in order to Lock land at Cape 17. Canaveral, we need to have this green line ending on top of that box. Lock 16. So we had quite a bit of cross range. We still had over 500 kilometers of cross range. So as I'm putting in some left bank here, Mock 15. We can we can see that we're getting pretty well targeted. We're down to 4,000 meters a second. We're still moving at uh, three times acceleration, and we could use even more bank than what we currently have because we need to, we need to pull Mock ourselves quite 14. a bit farther to the north. APU fuel 70 percent. Again, I'm not going to go into a full landing because it would it just takes too long. But that's, that's how you use Aero Break MFD. You start off by making sure that you run out of energy, you know, when your green line's closer to that box. And then as you get in closer, uh, you want to make sure that you're, you know, finally pinpointing where this box ends right on top of that. So you can Mock see that we 12. still, uh, we currently we've got in the maximum amount of banks. So we can't bank anymore. Mock but if we 11. have less cross range, if we had, you know, remember when we undocked from the ISS, we had 550 kilometers of cross range. Ten. So if we had less cross range than that, then this green line would actually be coming straight across here and ending Mock on that nine. box there. But we're getting pretty close to... Uh, Mock 8. Mock 7. To our destination can see we're basically all the way there and if we look at map MFD Mach 6 you can see here we're down you know pretty far south of Cape Canaveral again that's the uh, that's the cross range distance so we just have to pull ourselves out around we can kind of close out Mach 4 arrow break MFD at this point we don't really need it Mach 3 and we just basically start pointing Warning. ourselves wing stress have to be careful not to overstress the vessel System reset. Mock two. And we just want to basically point ourselves toward Cape Canaveral at this point, and then we would go in and land. So Subsonic. that's. Mock one. No, no, I'm still at three X. That's why I'm having so many problems controlling. But the uh, base is up there, and again, you know, this isn't going to be a proper, you know, landing video because it takes quite a bit of time to go through the whole procedure and how to do everything. So that is the very basics of Aero Break MFD, and I was actually wanting to show a little bit more about it, but since I'm already over 30 minutes, I'm just going to have to do another video on Aero Break MFD. Uh, the last thing I just want to mention again is that, you know, just remember that Aero Break MFD is not used for you know trying to help pinpoint your landings on the moon it's not used to help pinpoint your landings on mercury those types of bodies have no atmosphere so aero break mfd just doesn't have any purpose it's only useful on the earth on mars and then some of the other moons around the solar system that have atmospheres um, off the top of my head i can't go through them all but there's titan has a atmosphere and some of the other ones have an atmosphere as well so we will definitely have to cover Aerobrake MFD in more detail in another video because they're, if I'm going to keep these down to 30 minutes, then uh, we just don't have enough time to get into all of it. If you liked uh, this video, if it helped you at least understand a little bit more about Aerobrake MFD, go ahead and hit that like button down below. Uh, leave a comment, post your questions, things like that. And if you like the channel and you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified when I post new orbiter videos. Also, take a look in the description down below. Uh, I've got a link to my Facebook page, and my Facebook page is uh, interesting to follow in addition to being subscribed to my YouTube channel because I, I'm able to uh, communicate with people more freely because, you know, YouTube's very limited in the way that you can communicate. Um, but also on my Facebook page, I can post photos, I can post articles, I can post other videos and space-related content, things that you don't get to see if you're just subscribed to my YouTube channel. Uh, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and end it here, and I will see you in the next video.